have you ever had that one pesky breakout that just never seems to go away like no matter how dedicated you are to your skincare routine or how expensive your skincare products are you still have that one patch of skin or that little bit of skin texture and you're like where did this come from i'm doing all the right steps why isn't this going away a lot of our skin issues and the bacteria that our skin picks up may not even have to do with your skincare routine or how dedicated you are to it, but there are a multitude of factors outside the skincare realm that contribute to maybe a clogged pore or a specific breakout or discoloration or skin texture. Today, I wanted to share eight tips that are sort of niche, maybe you'd overlook them, but they will be essential to helping clear your skin. Tip number one is to wash your pillowcases and your skincare headbands and also your makeup brushes periodically. Have you ever gotten like breakouts like right here, like on kind of like your jawline, your like side cheek area? Yeah, that is because of pillowcases. Because if you think about it, every single night for seven plus hours, you are sleeping on a piece of fabric and fabric is absorbent. So all of your skin oils, maybe even some bacteria is going to be, as gross as it sounds, is going to be seeping into the pillowcase. So it is highly important to wash your pillowcases. I wash my pillowcases. I try to do like, use one side of the pillowcase for one night if that makes sense so never using the part of my pillowcase twice before washing so i have four pillows so i can go up to eight nights without washing but i would suggest at least washing your pillowcases once a week to just really ensure that that bacteria is constantly getting like cleaned out and then refreshed and that is going to help with any breakouts you have on like the side of your face this could be like in your hairline or like right above your eyebrow especially like your cheek area your pillowcases are going to contribute to whatever breakouts there so making sure they're clean is definitely going to help clear that area of your skin up and as i said earlier skincare headbands they do the exact same thing so if you're constantly wearing your skincare headband even though it's not for as long as you're laying on your pillowcases, the skincare headband is still going to be absorbing not just your skin oils, but the oils in your hair too, because it's gonna lay in your hairline. So if you realize that you are having breakouts along your hairline, it's probably due to your skincare headband. So make sure you're washing that again at least once a week just to get rid of the bacteria. Another thing that I mentioned was the makeup brushes. That's also very important. That is in the same realm as washing your pillowcases and your skincare headband because it's gonna be the same thing. Like your makeup brushes are literally brushing the oil and maybe, like I said, bacteria around on your skin. They're brushing it around, but they're also collecting it. So then past bacteria could be replenished onto your skin and that just sounds so gross make sure you are cleaning your makeup brushes and again i recommend once a week just take that sunday do that self-care sunday and just clean everything up so you have a better chance at having clearer skin a little side note i was watching a youtube video the other day and it was like uh cool amazon finds and to go along with the brush cleaning, there was like this cool spray and you spray it under a towel and then you like wipe your makeup brush over the spray but on the towel and that's supposed to help clean your brushes. And I thought that was super cool because I mean, we've seen like the classic like just run it over your hand with like some soap, but like a spray, I don't know, was very interesting to me, but that was just a little side note, but I thought it was cool. Tip number two. So this also sort of relates to just making sure everything is clean. And this is also going to contribute to 
any acne or pimples you get especially along like your cheek area but also again like this area of your face and that is when you have a dirty phone screen so when your phone screen is dirty i don't know about you guys but when i like take a phone call and i have like my skincare products on that make my skin like dewy i guess when i take my phone away there's like actual like marks where the product from my face has been transferred onto the phone screen and that always makes me very like icked out i guess so making sure you have a clean phone screen is going to be essential honestly because when you're taking the phone calls and it's touching your skin if your phone screen is not clean the bacteria from your phone screen is going to transfer onto your face and I know that may be obvious, but like, just think about where your phone has been. Like, that's not even just like your own skin funk, like your own skin oils and products being replenished back onto your face. That's like bacteria from a multitude of probably hands and surfaces and places, and that's going on your face. So make sure your phone screen is clean, especially when you are taking phone calls and even just on your phone, because then you will later probably touch your face. And if your hands were on your phone, whatever bacteria was there is now gonna go from your hands to your face. I would probably strive to use speakerphone or at least use headphones when taking phone calls, because as I said earlier, your skincare products and your skin oils transfer onto your phone so if you just like eliminate your phone touching your face that's going to help like avoid the transaction of oils and stuff so i would just use speakerphone as much as possible so you don't even have to worry about your phone touching your face i'm sick so apologies but my voice is gonna be constantly changing throughout this video and if you hear snipples or pause to coughs, like little cough breaks, I'm so sorry. I'm getting sick and my voice is honestly on a roller coaster ride right now, but we're just gonna accept it and live with it, roll through it. We're good. But we do need to take a tea break because I'm drinking spearmint tea and tea always helps with my throat. Skincare tip number three, find the right shampoo and conditioner. So this is going to tie into not just any acne or blemishes on your face, but your shampoo and conditioner is also going to affect like body acne, especially back acne. So if you think about it, you're in the shower, you're shampooing your hair and you're conditioning your hair, especially when you condition your hair, that hair with the product is touching your body and if your skin is not agreeing with that product it's going to get irritated or it's going to break out so whatever hair products you use even though they're not for your skin they need to at least get along with it because even as you rinse out your hair that like soapy water residue is going to like run down your body so you want to make sure that your shampoo and conditioner are going to help your skin and they're not going to fight against it or clog your pores because that's just going to cause more breakouts not just on your face but on your body especially your shoulders and your back i actually have a first-hand experience with the whole like um hair products affecting your skin so for the longest time this was like about a year or two ago for the longest time i had like a pretty severe breakout like right here like kind of by my hairline on my forehead it was literally just on my left side of my forehead and i was like what the heck is going on i have tried a multitude of spot treatments a multitude of cleansers and serums and i have had this so minute and specific breakout for I, I think I had it for a couple years like it was two to three years and it just wouldn't go away and every single time it would try to clear up there would be like two more pimples right in that spot 
and I was so confused I was like what the heck like this is actually making me so mad and I honestly kind of got a little hopeless and I was like is this ever gonna go away is this just like a little mark I'm gonna have like why is my skin doing this and so I talked to my mom about it and this was when she was going through like aesthetic school and doing more of her own research to become an esthetician and we kind of collaborated and I was like yeah like this breakout will not go away and then she was like you know what it's probably the products in your hair that you're using because that breakout was so close to my hairline that if you think about it like if I'm shampooing my hair of course the shampoo is gonna sit like right there it's gonna somehow get to that spot and I was like you know what you're so right I haven't changed my hair products or even if I did it's not to like it's probably gonna be like a suave hair product it's not like Pacifica where the ingredients are better because I was just using like drugstore hair products and I didn't really pay attention to like whether the ingredients were good or not but I will say as soon as I started using the Pacifica hair care and native hair care that breakout went away and I haven't had that breakout since I switched my shampoo and conditioner and also Bacne has cleared up too because I'm not using these hair products that are clogging my pores and constantly giving me breakouts so that is a big one and I think a lot of people overlook that because it's like my hair care products have nothing to do with my skincare but they're so closely associated it's unreal and it's definitely definitely something to keep in mind and watch out for especially if you're struggling with like breakouts around your hairline or back knee so shampoo and conditioner check it and find one that agrees with your skin and doesn't give you breakouts skincare tip number four is kind of going along with what you should be doing in your skincare routine but this is not just for your face so tip number four is to make sure you exfoliate and hydrate obviously when you have a skincare routine one of your main goals should be replenishing that hydration after you wash your face so moisturize right but you also need to exfoliate because exfoliating helps relieve that layer of sort of dead not necessarily damaged but dead unused skin right so when you exfoliate you are bringing about the new skin the healthier skin and getting away like the old i guess tarnished layer maybe when you exfoliate it helps just revitalize and renew your skin so exfoliation is very important back to what i was saying about hydration this is very important so a little experience real quick so as a wrestler i always have to watch out for like skin funk like ringworm and impetigo as much as that's like gross to a wrestler it's like you're gonna get it as at some point like it's not even your fault it's probably the other people wrestling on those mats and you don't even know but you're kind of mopping your skin across those mats and they're probably nasty so as a wrestler i'm used to the fact that i could get skin skin worm i'm used to the fact that i could get ringworm or impetigo and that's why i just have to be on high alert so about i think it was a month ago i actually got ringworm on my knee and my knees get super dry especially after i shave they get really dry so i really have to hydrate them and i keep saying skin worm when i went to the doctor to check if it was ringworm obviously it was ringworm and i got the medication i needed for it but she was like asking me what body washes I use and I was just telling her I just use like a bar of soap and then she was like are you moisturizing your body like after you get out of the shower you know and I was like yeah I try to and she was like this is actually super important the doctor was telling me that after you shower your pores obviously are very open especially if you're using hot water so they're gonna be like a sponge your skin is kind of 
constantly like wanting to absorb right when you get out of the shower and so when you don't moisturize your skin is acting like a sponge she kind of explained it to me like this anytime i don't moisturize after the shower even if it's like hours before i go back on the wrestling mat when i do get on the wrestling mat my skin is going to be like dry and open so it's just going to absorb all the bacteria from the mat and this freaked me out i was like oh my, that makes sense like how dry skin would be more of like a collectant than like replenished hydrated skin so long story short um make sure you guys are hydrating because if you are not replenishing your skin it's gonna look for other resources to replenish it and that could be bacteria tip number five very simple one avoid touching your face like i said your hands are at school, they're at work, they're touching things, you know, you're using pencils, maybe you dropped it on the floor, you picked it up, you're using that pencil, maybe you used a public sink and you press that handle, that bacteria is on your hands. And if you avoid touching your face, you're going to eliminate like a huge percentage of the bacteria your skin could possibly come in contact with. And hands are kind of gross, so... I would keep them away from your beautiful skin. Tip number six is super extremely important, okay? This is sunscreen. So this sunscreen kind of doesn't directly impact breakouts, but it will impact skin texture, okay? Have you ever, well, you probably have gotten a sunburn and your skin is just so dry, it feels leathery, right? And this is temporary because obviously you should be putting on aloe and replenishing it after it's been severely irritated, right? But if you continuously don't use sunscreen and you continuously get sunburnt, that leathery skin texture that you feel right after the burn, it's going to stick with you. It's not going to be temporary this time. It's going to be your skin texture when you get older. So sunscreen is so so important it's kind of like investing if you start young the results when you are older are going to be amazing it's gonna all be worth it it's gonna be worth putting on maybe that greasy sun balm like sunscreen it's gonna be worth it i don't suggest using the greasy gross sunscreens find a sunscreen that you love and just goes on so easily because sunscreen doesn't have to be that nasty, greasy thing that you want to avoid. Find the one that works for you, but it's so important. Sunscreen is so important. Even though sunscreen isn't specifically to prevent your breakouts, it's going to help so much with your skin texture, whether it's right now or in 30 years. Sunscreen is going to avoid you from getting those dark spots, those permanent dark spots that are from sun exposure and it's going to save you from aging quicker and getting more wrinkles. Yeah, the more you repel the sun from your skin, the better and more youthful it's gonna look and be preserved for longer. So highly recommend sunscreen, even though it's not necessarily for acne and breakouts, it's for skin texture. And like I said, it'll help you tremendously in the long run. Okay, so number seven, is still kind of an experimental one for me and it's gonna be switch it up periodically so what i mean by this is switch up your products periodically obviously right so start with a cleanser maybe like buy it a second or third time use it and then try a new cleanser right you always want to experiment with what works best with your skin and then figure out what doesn't work. The reason why I said it was experimental is because for me, I can't tell if it's in my head or not, but when I am using a product for so long repeatedly, I kind of get the feeling that my skin gets too used to it, right? So if I'm using a cleanser and I've been using that cleanser like repeatedly for like a year straight, I kind of get the feeling that it like stops working because like maybe my breakouts will come back and I'm like, okay, well, 
this skincare routine worked for me like a few months ago why isn't it still giving me the same results and again experimental but in my personal experience it's been because my skin gets too used to the products so i constantly have to like cycle in and out different products to keep my skin clear to keep my skin um nourished and such so switch out your products periodically if your go-to skincare routine just randomly is like not doing as well it could be because your skin is too used to the products so i feel like not many people really talk about that either and maybe it's because people already do experiment with new products because products are constantly coming out but if you're one of those like hardcore dedicated skincare people and you have been using the same products repeatedly maybe you've run into this where your skin just gets too used to it i don't know but try it out if you seem to be struggling with that where your skin just randomly breaks out from same products could be because you need to switch it up and give your skin something new so number eight goes along with number seven sort of um i brought up the fact of trying new products right and seeing what works but what happens if something doesn't work okay so when a product does not work for you stop stop it immediately like a product can be okay for your skin that's fine finish it don't waste it but if a product is like making you super red it's burning your skin it's just really irritating or just having terrible effects stop use immediately like do not continue okay so for me for some reason my skin really reacts to citrusy vitamin c things especially cleansers like i will break out in hives and get super red and puffy if i use like a citrus vitamin c cleanser very specific but my skin freaks out and i don't really have sensitive skin on my face so this was kind of a shock because i had never had a reaction to any skincare product like that and i was like okay i thought this was a good brand and it's not necessarily the brand but it's your unique skin type reacting to the product you're giving it so i obviously only used this cleanser once because it burned so bad and my skin was red for like three days after but I only used it once and I stopped using it after the reaction and I say this because I feel like I'm not sure as of now but I know like a few years ago it was a very common misconception that if a skincare product burned your skin that meant it was working especially to like fight off acne and this this hurts my soul like a skincare product should never burn e even if you want it to fight off acne okay there's certain products that are very harsh on your skin and maybe will like burn slightly and you need to get used to it but you can get rid of acne without having to put your skin through pain because pain doesn't mean something's working or not working. You can use acne products and they can be hydrating. They can be loving to your skin. So make sure you're using the products that are going to help with your skin. Burning does not mean good. And honestly, I suggest doing a patch test, especially if you know your skin gets really affected by skincare products. I would recommend doing a patch test and seeing how your skin reacts. And again, if you have an adverse reaction, do not keep using the product. If it's like giving you hives and breaking you out, making you puffy, if it's like severely burning but you don't have any redness or anything, just stop the product. Unless, of course, it's like prescription, but stop using a product if it's giving you that much irritation. and maybe consult with a dermatologist on why this is or why this won't work for you and maybe they can help decipher or suggest what will work for you that is going to be all eight of the tips and 
I hope you learned something new and could maybe even relate to my personal experiences. And overall, I hope you guys enjoyed and are that much closer to attaining the glass glowy skin that you guys all deserve. Thank you guys and I hope you guys have an amazing week.